It's nice to see a company such as Mercury take the hugely popular mid-range four-stroke outboard market by the horns. The new 75 Merc takes on that competitive field in that mid-range aluminium market in particular. That 70 to 80 horsepower range is a mighty popular size in this country and this new offering will certainly put the cat amongst the pigeons. We played a little game with the new Mercury 80 horsepower four-stroke. We actually put plenty of weight in the back of a side console bluefin and tried to get her up on the plane and guess what? Wacko! We planted the throttles and up she ripped without any dramas whatsoever. This thing is an absolute power pack from the second you turn the key right through to wide open revs and economy, you won't even notice it at the fuel gate. The 75 and 80 horsepower Mercury four-stroke outboards are D-rated versions of the 90, 100 and 115. Um, they basically, they're, they're designed, in my opinion, more for, um, more for a workboat usage or more for pushing a heavy pontoon boat. Um, they develop maximum power at only 5,000 revs, which is very rare for four-stroke 75 to 80. Um, they're they, um, in completely understressed engine. They have by far the biggest piston displacement of any 75 and 80 four-stroke outboard on the market. So with a little bit of regular maintenance, they'll last a lifetime. They're in completely understressed engines. When, when I'm talking about an engine uh, like, um, being understressed or whatever, what, what, what I'm saying is that, um, that the output, the output relative, relative to piston displacement is very low, which means that the engine doesn't have to work hard to achieve its maximum torque or its maximum power. It means that, that it, is design, it is designed to last a long time. Now, the, the 75 and 80 and, and the 90 to 115, um, they are the continuation, obviously, of the theme of the, of the Mercury 150, which is, again, it, uh, has the biggest piston displacement of any um, 150 horsepower outboard on, on the entire market, whether the two or four stroke. The thing is, by doing that, you, you actually uh, you actually have a lot of torque developed. You don't need to go to the complexity of variable valve timing or anything like that to, to actually develop power because you have so much piston displacement uh, that you develop a lot of torque a lot along the way. So you can keep an engine deliberately simple um, with just a single overhead cam and so on. You don't still don't have to worry about balance shafts and things like that with these 75 to 115 range. But you but because of that, you don't need to have all the complexities that you have in say a marinized car engine to actually develop that maximum power. So the, not only is the engine less stressed, but it's also a lot simpler to maintain, maintain down the track. To repair is going to cost way less than a comparable um, 75, 90 horsepower car-based four-stroke outboard. Fuel burn's pretty good, actually. Um, on, on the V80 the that I tried, we were, we were using comparable fuel at wide open throttle to, say, um, the direct four-stroke competition. Um, we um, Down low, it was pretty economical as well, um, but mid-range was the main forte because the engine, the engine is so understressed that once you're up on the plane, once you're up on the plane in the, say, the 3,000 to 4,000 rev range, the engine just sips fuel. It's actually very economical.